This is Changemakers with Katie Gore, finding the right solutions for the affordable housing community. This week's Changemakers are Tanya Dempsey and Nicole Graham, the co-CEOs of CSG Advisors. Tanya and Nicole are experts in affordable housing finance and development with over 30 years of combined experience advising housing authorities nationwide. Both have deep expertise in strategic planning and real estate transactions, with Tanya's emphasis on financial management and Nicole's emphasis on maximizing public investments. Tanya, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And Nicole, welcome as well. Thanks so much for having me. So we have a lot of information to cover, and I'm thrilled to have you both here. Let's start by giving our listeners an overview of what CSG Advisors is. Nicole, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. So CSG Advisors, we are a municipal advisory firm. We focus on public agency clients. Tanya and I lead the public housing authority practice where we work helping housing authorities and local housing departments both craft and execute financings for individual developments and entire housing portfolios. And just sort of generally work at helping public agencies perform at their best. Tanya, you and Nicole are co-CEOs. Tell us more about how that dynamic works. I am so excited to be on this podcast. I feel like I'm a long-term listener, first-time guest. I know Nicole is as well. When Nicole and I started this practice, what we found to be super valuable was incorporating both of our perspectives in the way that we approach our work. And so becoming co-CEO was kind of a no-brainer for us. We are a package deal. And I think we really do believe in the idea that the job is very big. And when you have a partner that you trust, kind of like in a marriage, you share that role. And there are strengths that I have and there are strengths that Nicole has. And I think that having a co-CEO role, one, is super, super unique, but it does, I think, play to both of our strengths and also allows us to be supportive in ways that you wouldn't necessarily be able to if you didn't have a co-CEO role. This could be Nicole, maybe. Do you see, you mentioned earlier your experience in the single family bond practice. Do you see a lot of other women in that practice or in the affordable housing field that you're in right now? Thankfully, we do. And and I'll be honest, like the, one of the things that I've loved, I, I've been at CSG for, for, this is my 20th year. And one of the things that I've loved since I started was that in our practice, in that the housing authority practice in particular, right, there are a lot of women. It is more diverse. There are more people of color in leadership and as as staff people in the agencies that we work with Th- that is less true i would say on like the you know in the housing finance agency world with single family and multifamily bonds but it is you know there are certainly more women there than you might find say in the in the private sector but yeah i mean we're that's that's part of what we're trying to you know, encourage and ultimately change is is having um, more women and more diversity um, across the industry. Earlier this year, you transitioned to this female lead milestone for your company. And tell us a little more about how that evolved. Exactly the way that Nicole kind of described it, right? We noticed that there were a lot of female leaders um, in the industry that are kind of executive directors, but, you know, chairman of the boards are still men. And so I think we thought it was really important. We, you know, the public ha- housing practice leads a number of women as well on our, you know, for our practice. And I thought we thought it was really important for us to transition the firm into a WBE. It was just something that's like we were both kind of super passionate about. CSG as a firm has started back in like 1978, its earliest iteration. And 
has always been heavily male-led, like male-founded, male-led. Being a majority women-owned firm now, right, our, our recent you know, shift and our recent uh, certification as a WBE, that's really the result of like five years of strategy discussions and negotiations with with the firm leadership to sort of take that lead. Um, and, you know, it was there there were a lot of there were a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, because we we really needed to convince the leadership that um, that they they a that they should sell that they b they should sell to us and see that doing so would be in the long term interest of the firm and th- that was true even though we had you know we had tremendous performance to point to um, outperforming like other areas of the firm and growth and leverage like we still found ourselves needing to defend like a lot of what we did and what we wanted and so that experience I think has really just sort of driven home, I would say, like, um, or maybe underscored, like, our commitment to to broadening the group, you know, not within our firm, uh, right, but just broadening the group industry-wide so that we do have better, more diverse perspectives, like, you know, weighing in on different things. You know, we have found in, you know, in our firm that that certainly is as we became more involved and then ultimately took over, right? Like the the policies that we adopted as a firm were different, very different from what they had had been previously. And those are the types of things that we want to see more of, honestly, not just across the industry, but just across, you know, across the US. Like everyone should should have an opportunity to have that. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in one more thing is that like the other thing that we did was we spent a lot of time preparing. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of credentials, as Nicole said, but it was like we like read traction. We read all the Brene Brown books. We did a Brene Brown training. We did good to great. Start with why. Four disciplines of execution. Like we did a ton of you know kind of leadership training to to position ourselves in a way that allowed us to be CEOs. But I think made a really stronger argument that we were the right fit. I want to get into the public housing repositioning and the RAD conversion work that you guys are doing, but we have the microphone right now, and I want to keep this topic for just a few minutes longer, okay? (laughs) (laughs) We've got some exciting updates that you guys are partaking at NARA with the Women's Empowerment Breakfast. Let's talk about that because there's implications for gender equality, empowerment, encouragement, all of the concepts, and you guys are really spearheading this. So let's get into that for a minute. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I feel like, I feel like, you know, we all sort of pitched it. But um, I I mean, I will say first off, Katie, that like, I love the company, right? So like, being able to work with you, and Tanya Beeler, and the NARO team, I feel like has been a tremendous gift. I always look forward to our discussions and I feel so energized every single time leaving them. So that's like the very like super self-centered answer. But I would say more broadly, like I think at the heart of it, I feel a need that we need to retain more women in housing and provide more opportunities for women in leadership. You know, I've seen this, you know, like we talked about a little bit, you know, at, at CSG, just differences that 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 occur with with women le- leadership um things related to work life balance and equity and pay and benefits like parental leave and flexible work schedules and i i truly believe that these are things that should be extended across the board you know when i think about these breakfasts like this is an opportunity you know in, in my mind for all of us to be thinking about our common shared interests to have a really safe space to talk about those what brings us all together and really you know ideally creating opportunities and I don't know maybe an infrastructure for us to kind of carve out those paths for other women and really making people feel welcome and that the, this is a long-term career path with a tremendous amount of 
growth and personal trajectory. You both at CSG have done this a few times across the nation. What are you hearing are some of the challenges that women in the affordable housing sector are experiencing? Can you give us a glimpse of those? So so we have done this a couple of times across the country, and there's a a, a wide range of topics that come up. Um, The first and the one thing that like makes me feel so energized, I think that is the right word, Nicole, is the sisterhood, right? So so the sisterhood comes up as something that that folks across the country, women across the country strive for, and mentorship. So I think that is a common theme that women in particular want to talk about. We did this once for another organization where they actually talked about implicit bias. And a woman told us her story about how she kept being asked to plan these parties and was not promoted and eventually needed to change jobs in order to get ahead. And then she came back to run the agency, which was like such a amazing story, but really kind of spoke to implicit bias. Um, I also see kind of imposter syndrome is another really big scene that comes up at these conferences where people want to share how it made them feel, how different rooms made them feel. And, you know, some of the takeaways there are, you know, simply demonstrate kindness and be kind because it's unclear what kind of struggles folks have that are in the room. So those are, you know, off the top of my head. I could talk about this for forever, but those are those are the top three that I think come up for us when when we do this. And and those stories are super powerful. So we're, you know, happy to be providing that forum and safe space for people to feel inspired and to feel connection. So identifying the list of items that aren't working or aren't working fairly and equitably, that may be a long list, but is there (laughs) guidance we could provide for women who are listening, possibly who say, hey, I want to secure some leadership roles, even in the finance realm or the housing realm. How would you advise them or how would you provide some guidance for that? One of my big words uh, in this regard is, is, is boundaries. I think that can be hard sometimes to observe and to implement, but I think sometimes in order to get ahead, we have to say the things that we're not willing to do, actually. Like the story that Tanya just told, right? If you're always being the one who has to plan the party, right? Like it's really hard to have the time to then get ahead and and to not be the be the one who's sort of like taken advantage of. And I think it's super, super hard to do. But I think that sometimes just sort of asking questions about you know, whether it's an assignment or, you know, asking the right questions that will potentially help one get ahead, right? So, you know, it's like, hey, can we do Ring Around the Rosie here on these parties? Right? And like, I'll do January and July, but can somebody else do the other months, right? Like, this should be a rotating thing. One of my first uh, jobs was actually a policy advisor to a, a council member. And the council member was accustomed to his two women staffers bringing him soda during these council meetings. And when I told him I wouldn't do that, he got a little upset. But he also then, you know, relayed to his chief of staff that it was like, OK, well, I guess we won't have Nicole get this. So we'll have someone else do it. Even though it scared me, it wasn't, um, and I know that's a minute example, and maybe it you know, isn't the kind of things that other people are facing, but I, I think it starts with those smaller steps of you know, carving out those boundaries of, of what is appropriate in, in your role and then looking for the opportunities to, to go bigger. No, I think that's courageous. As like your first job, right? So you're like right out of college or in college, and to be able to kind of push back like that, I find that to be super courageous. Yeah, I'm thinking, Nicole, the soda is an analogy for yes. so many other things, though, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, we're talking like promotion, compensation, appropriate guidelines. I mean, like fill in the blank, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and on that compensation, I mean, this is just this is just such a hard thing and and it's something that we all need to continue to work towards and frankly, like we all need to make sure that we are not perpetuating it. Right? Because the reality is you know, what we know is from, you know, the statistics is that women are less likely to ask for those raises, to, you know, respond to the promotion requests and things like that and, and, and apply for those. And because women tend to, more than men, not across the board, but tend to see like if if 10 qualifications are required and I only meet eight, then, oh, I guess I'm not qualified. As opposed to, you know, when men tend to see that list, they're like, hey, I got four out of 10, right? Like, I'm totally close. I got it. I got it. Right? And like, and I, and so I think we need to really do our best to encourage, you know, all of the women in our lives to be going after it. And, you know, I know Tanya and I, like when we are reviewing um, just, you know, internally our own staff, right? It's like, making sure that like we are not falling victim to that same thing, right? That we are making sure that even even someone who will not be, you know, asking for recognition or asking for a raise or what have you, that we are we are giving that. Um and that we are we are showing in our practices that, you know, we're going to be judging people based on their actual performance, not necessarily their character trait of whether they happen to be assertive enough to ask for it, right? But also being, you know, encouraging folks to be assertive. It's tough. It makes me also think about women entering or re-entering the workforce and the resume juggling there, how some people don't have the ability to say, what is the skill set you've done versus the position that you've had or the gap in history? Those are some of the concepts that I believe has started to come up in some of these women's breakfasts as well. So these are so valuable. I'm so glad that both of you and CSG Advisors has been involved from really the ground floor in getting this launched. What an example for all of us. Thanks. We're super excited. Super, super excited. We hope that it continues. We hope that it grows. Right. We hope that we're able to make some change. You two are definitely change makers, and I can't wait to get into your day-to-day work, but we have to stop here. So coming up in the second part of my talk with co-CEOs of CSG Advisors, Nicole Graham and Tanya Dempsey, Nicole talks about the mission of CSG. We want the agencies themselves to feel empowered, and most importantly in that process, and this is where I get get all worked up, <laughs> is to do it in a way that preserves that long-term affordability, leverages their money to the maximum extent possible, retains control, provides the the maximum like quality of living uh, housing for residents. That's the goal. Thanks for listening to Changemakers with Katie Gore. To find out more about Katie, go to quadel.com. That's Q-U-A-D-E-L.com. This has been a production of Forbes Books Radio.